Hello everyone, this is Eva and you are with Emma Butin and here you are watching 10 by 10 lessons with Emma Butin and Eva. So on chapter 1, we covered that it is important for startups to choose their one clear message, either utility or emotional. So on chapter 2, Emma, you mentioned about primary value. So products primarily value, what is it? Product's primary value. It's the one thing that the product is promising to its users that it will do all the way through. If you remember, in the first lesson, we discussed that the product's message has to be one clear message, either utility or emotional. Why? Because it's just easier to get the user's attention when it's one clear message. The product's primary value is the continuation of that. We as users, we need to know what it is that a product does and what it is that a product promises us that it will do. Okay, so once you promise your user one clear thing and you continue all the way through, this is your primary value of the product. And let me give you a few examples. Waze, the company that was bought by Google, promised us a free GPS. It was always a free GPS. Along the way, it added features, and maps it to you could map out, and you spoke to other drivers, but it was always a free GPS. That was their first promise. Another example is Fiverr. It is a website that started off as a marketplace for $5. Buy and trade anything for $5, mainly services. Today, Fiverr does $5, $10, $20, even $100. But it started off as the first promise, everything for five bucks. Another great example is actually Pinterest. It's the hugest uh, picture aggregator now in the world. And they started off with a little button called pin. You can pin any picture that you see on the internet. And then you add it on to a total aggregate mechanism of pictures. Today, it's a browsing system, you organize things, you browse through things, you see lots of pictures, but the original promise of pinning any small picture or large that you see over the internet remained still here. Another example, Get Taxi. Get Taxi said, we always want to see when the taxi is coming over so we can see the time of arrival. Today, Get Taxi drivers are really nice drivers and people give them ratings and they actually order Get Taxi services because the drivers are very nice. But their primary value, let's not forget, was let's see when the cab is coming over and it remained that way. So this is the product's primary value. It is very important to maintain it because this is really the meta, the most important message that you tell your users no matter what and when I will always deliver this message to you. This is my promise to you, and this is how you acquire users. So Emma, can you give us some examples of primary value? So a primary value is something that you give your users right here and right now. For example, the first one, the obvious one, is pieces of information. IMDB, for example, is an application and a website that gives information about movies and actors, newspapers, is another obvious source of information. All relevant uh, websites that give out information, that satisfy your curiosity, are a good example of primary value that gives you some information. Another example of a primary value is a money-saving mechanism. For example, Groupon. Groupon is another place when you can get on that website and you know you buy something for much cheaper than you can usually get. It's an automatic money-saving mechanism. Another example is BillGuard. BillGuard tells you if you registered your, your credit card, I will be able to tell you where fraudulent transactions take place. So this is an automatic promise of I will tell you how to save money on fraudulent transactions. Going from utility primary values, such as money-saving mechanism and time-saving mechanism and everything else around it, we can actually learn that an emotional positive feedback is also a great primary value. And here's a great example, Twitter. Twitter, when you tweet what you do and where you are, you get so many followers to like you and give you feedback and follow you around. That's a great emotional support and that's a primary value. 
they always promise that when you tweet, you'll have your followers to tell you something. Even if it's one or a hundred, you get your feedback. Instagram is another great example. When you take a photo of you or anything around you on Instagram and post it up, you feel like a rock star because you get so many likes and that's a primary value. They promise you that you feel like a rock star because you get those likes. So we moved along from product and utility to realizing that emotional positive feedback is a great primary value. So Emma, you mentioned that it is important for startups to also focus on their design. But startups may think it's unnecessary. And what do you think of it? Design is actually very, very important. Just because Steve Jobs set the bar very high. He told us that we can fall in love with products just the way and just because they look a certain way. And we got to be very spoiled. We like beautiful products. And so our product, whether it's an application, a physical product, when we go on web, it catches our attention because the way it is designed. And sometimes design by itself can be a primary value. That's why when we want to capture users, make it look pretty. It always works. Emma, what will happen if the company decides to change its primary value? Are there any consequences? Well, when a company chooses to change its primary value, it basically changes the promise. It promises its users. And when you change the promise that you promise your users, you actually now have to get a new set of users. And here is an example. If Waze, a free GPS, would tell you now that it's no longer a free GPS, then they would need to acquire new users that would want to pay for it. Same thing would go with Twitter. If Twitter said it's no longer 140 notes, but you actually can use other things in there, then the users would need to acquire to a new product. So essentially, when you're changing your primary value, you're changing your product. And all the ramifications of developing a new product apply. That means getting new users, acquiring new users, and delivering a new set of rules to a new audience. So we have questions from Korean viewer. So we have a question from Hyunsub Lee from Must Idea. He wants to realize his idea of an architectural design application, especially in finishing material, and wanted your advice. So here's the question. Because architecture can be applied to not only domestic market, but also global market, we may expand to global market. I wonder if there is a similar service in Israel, and I'd love to hear more about it. And I wonder how we can conduct marketing and facilitate our business through Israel VC. Also, I want to have your feedback about how we can improve our idea. What would you advise? Mr. Lee, thank you for your question. It actually is a three-part answer. The first one, as I understand, from your application, customers need to take a picture and then apply to their design, and then they compare. This is a two-part message. And in order for us to understand the application very fast and that you can market it globally, I suggest that you put one phrase into it, such as, it is the best design ever, it is the best prices ever. Make me understand in one clear message what it is that your product does best. When you understand that one message, it is much easier to market it globally on the internet because then the word would spread much faster. This is one thing. So in Israel, I'm sure that there are other products available, but your product can compare not only in Israel, but all over the world. And I suggest you do that. And the third part answer to your question about Israeli VCs. Israeli VCs invest mostly in localized companies, such as American VCs would want to invest in companies that they can cater to next to them locally. And sometimes VCs do have an outside branch and you can take a look at those VCs that are next to you whether they're Israeli or an American but that they have a local branch and this is because they want to help you they want to invest in you they want to be on your board and they want you to be closely located so they can not only give you money but assist you in future matters also with opening some doors Emma thank you for your explanation so what will be our next session be? 
The next session is about how we all became rock stars and how we got emotionally attached to our computer screen. You're more than welcome to post questions here on this Facebook page and I will be happy to answer them in our next session. Great, so hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye bye!